Hey you all, today we're talking about something that every official does not want to happen, but is bound to happen at some point in your officiating career, and that is the inverted whistle. As you can see from the signal right there, the look of doom on the face of any referee that has to give this signal. It's not a great signal to give, we never hope to have one of these, but like I said, you are bound to have an inverted whistle at some point in your officiating career. You just hope it happens in like a rec game, middle school game, JV game, something like that. Definitely not a game of importance. But we're gonna, what we're going to do, we're going to take a dive into this and kind of look at it. Because I think a lot of officials, we avoid it because we just hope it never happens. So we don't really look at what to do when it does happen. But there are specific parameters set in the rule book to follow if it does happen. Another note on this, I'm pulling a lot of this information from the writing study guide. Uh, if you don't have one of those, highly advise to pick one up. A lot of the information from this is coming. Obviously it's coming from the rule book as well. But a lot of it is being pulled from the study guide. So if you don't have one, pick it up. Um... They're pretty, pretty good. So what we're going to look at right now is just the inverter was what it is, when it occurs, how we should avoid them, and ultimately what to do when one happens. So an inverter whistle is a whistle blowing in air, and it can be accidentally or intentionally, that ends the down. So the, these most commonly will occur a fumble, forward or backward pass, uh, whether or not you think the runner's down or not. Having a lot of muff punts. Uh, there are other situations where it can happen, but these are the most common that we find these four situations. <clears throat> so the best thing to do is just avoid an inverted whistle. Ideally, you don't want to happen at all. So a couple of things to, to avoid it, to prevent it from happening. It's patience on your whistle. Remember, in a normal situation, the whistle does not kill the play. I was in a vertical whistle a little, but most of the time, a whistle is not what kills the play. The action kills the play. So, when a runner's tackled, the play's over when his knees down. The play isn't over when we blow the whistle. This gets complicated a lot because we hear. Especially if you have a chippy game and you hear coaches, hey, play the whistle. And their practice play the whistle. And that's not bad. We, we want them to play to the whistle. Um, but a lot of times that kind of gets in our heads as officials. So we think, okay, they're playing to the whistle. So if I want to prevent any chippiness, uh, I need to make sure I blow the whistle timely. And we do want to blow them timely. We just don't want to be in a rush to blow it. Make sure that runner's knee is down before you blow that whistle. Um, see the ball in possession of the runner. Runner on the ground. Release his knee on the ground before you blow the whistle. Those are the things that we want to look at. You know. So remember that. Patience on that whistle. Don't be in a rush to blow dead. And, you know, and a lot of times, you especially see in college, they don't even blow the whistle. And I know, particularly, I've been in games where we have two teams that run a wing tee. Uh, we won't blow the whistle a lot of times. And coaches, players, I mean, they all know when it plays over. Obviously, if you have a chippy game, it's a little more complicated. Because you may have players who use, take advantage of that. But, just patience on that whistle. Second thing is, do not anticipate what will happen. This is particularly when we have a muff punt. When we have an inverted whistle, the back judge or field judge just assumes that the receiver is going to catch the ball. So they see it hit the hands, they blow the whistle. So that kind of goes into patience too, but remember, we react to what's going on in the field. We don't predict it. We just react to it. So let's make sure we're doing that. We're not, we don't want to anticipate anything that will happen. Remember, these are teenagers, and the coaches are innovative. 
So we never, we can never assume what's going to happen. Alright, so now we got an errant toot. So what are we going to do now? Well, it depends on the scenario. And here's the three scenarios we look at. Is the ball in the player possession? Is it a fumble, backward pass, or a legal forward pass? Or is it a legal forward pass or a kick? Those are things we have to look at. So if we have the ball in player possession, this falls under rule 423C. Balls in player possession, the play is dead immediately. So remember, this is a rare time where the whistle kills the play, not the action. So the team that is in player possession, uh, team or team that's in possession, they have one or two options. So just take the ball where it was blown dead. We're going to replay it from the previous spot. Those are the two options. The second scenario. Fumble, backward pass, or a legal forward pass. This is 4-2-3-C as well. The, the team, the fumbling or passing team, they have, again, one or two options. They can take the ball where the player possession was lost. Or replay it down from the previous spot. And remember, the fumbling or passing team still has team possession. There's always team possession. When you have fumble, forward pass, backward pass, there's always a team that is in possession. Let's not get team possession, player possession mixed up. So the team that whose player was last in possession. That is team possession. So if you have a fumble, the offense, they have team possession until the defense gains possession. Once the defense gains possession, now team possession is switched. But while that ball is loose, until another player has gained possession of it, team possession reverts to the team that fumbled. Now an inverted whistle on a legal forward pass or kick. And remember, these are when the whistle occurs with these specific elements in place. So in this situation, the inverted whistle happens while the ball is in flight. Okay, this is not there's an inverted whistle on this type of play. The inverted whistle happens during this specific action. So if the inverted whistle happens during the legal forward pass or the kick, then there's no option. The ball is just go to previous spot and we replay it down. That's the only outcome for that. So what if we have a foul? And this is a pretty common scenario too. You have an inverted whistle with a foul or was a foul in a play in which you have an inverted whistle. In many in many ways, it acts as a savior, because if you have a regular run play, you have a uh, inverted whistle. You get penalty accepted. You administer the penalty. Inverted whistles ignored. In most cases, most of the time. So let's have a couple of scenarios. So at the snap. B-22 immediately grabs and twists the face mask of A-88. L flags it. A-11 then throws a forward pass. And while the pass is in flight, the L follows this flag with a whistle. So the whistle during the pass. The ball is caught in the end zone for a touchdown. So in this scenario, the whistle kills the play. And the ball is immediately dead, no touchdown. You enforce the face mask from the previous spot and you replay the down. Unless you have, unless the penalty gives you a first down, of course. The reason we don't ignore the whistle in this scenario is because the whistle ended the play while the ball was in flight. But because you had the ball in flight, we can't just ignore it like you could if it's just blown while player possession or blown with a fumble. We can't ignore it in this situation. For a pass in flight, you have. The inverted whistle while that ball is in flight <clears throat> kills the play. 
No touchdown. And then the referee gets to explain, explain all that to Ace Coach, which is always fun. There's another scenario. You have fourth and five. During the kick, R holds the gunner. Then the whistle is blown when the kick is muffed by R. In this scenario, you enforce the holding, which will give K a first down. Again, we can't ignore the whistle in this scenario because when the whistle killed the ball, the status of the ball was a kick. Remember, kick is a kick is a kick. So it's just like you have if the kick is in flight, you have the whistle. It kills the while it's in flight, just like with a um, forward pass. Forward pass in flight, whistle kills it. Same thing with the pump. Whistle kills it while it's in flight. We can't ignore that. Same thing. If it's muffed, remember, a kick is a kick is a kick. So the status of the ball is still a kick. A whistle can't be ignored. Like I said, you're going to enforce that holding, which will give K a first down. And then again, referee, you can explain all that to ours coach. Here's just some loose ends, some miscellaneous stuff. Uh, if you have first touching, the first touching takes precedence over the inadvertent whistle. So if you got an onside kick attempt, unless say K touches it before it goes 10 yards, an official... And it really blows a whistle. Well, we just go first touch. Place the ball there. Because the first touching happened. And that takes precedence over the IW. If the, when we stop the clock for an inverted whistle. And we replay the down. Then we're going to stop the clock on the ready. If the inverted whistle occurs during the last time down of a period, we extend the period for a time, untimed down. And then we also use an inverted whistle for weird off-the-wall situations. So, for a pass, say it hits a bird, uh, we go an inverted whistle rule. We use the same rule that we use an inverted whistle. Uh, if it hits a spectator in bounds, like, you know, so you have a streaker, like the Super Bowl. We go to the inverted whistle. Or if the ball comes deflated during a play while it's live. So, those are just some loose ends to tie up. So let's look at some actual plays. Real quick, let me clarify the statement on the first touching. Uh, they still get the option to replay the down. If they want to. So okay, we get the option to replay it down. Or they can take the spot at first touching. There's, it's not automatically you got to go first touching. Um, but that's that's the result. So, just want really to clarify that. They, they do get the option. Alright. Let's look at some plays. So in this play we had an inverted whistle. And just look at the different scenarios. The the whistle happened when the ball is loose. So the not not before not when the player possessions ball's loose. So I go to the fumble. So the team in possession. So we have team possession, not player possession, team possession. Team possession belongs to the offense. Because they last had a player in possession when the ball became loose. So an inverted whistle during the loose ball. So the offense, team in white, they get the option. They can take the ball where they came out. So they can take the ball right here, about a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Or they can replay it down. That's why one reason why we have a bean bag, we have a fumble, so we bean bag fumbles. Because so we go to that bean bag, I say, okay, we'll go second and eleven from here, or they replay it down first and ten. And this is just one of those whistles where we talk about patience. You know, we don't, we just gotta be patient on the whistle. There's no need to be in a hurry on this whistle. So just. Let it play out. As soon as you see him on the ground, or if his forward progress has stopped, has been stopped, 
then we blow the whistle. But patience. Oh, so here's another one. So let's look at and this interval whistle. I don't think it's so much impatience on the whistle. I think this one's probably just an issue of miscommunication. So we have a backward pass. Remember, we look at the line judge to determine backward pass. So we have a good signal from the line judge. We have a backward pass. So we all know backward pass, loose ball. This ball is alive. And then the line judge, I think, just blows the whistle. While the ball is loose. So remember the option, same option does a fumble. They can take the ball from where player last had possession or replay it out. Then there's a way you're probably going to replay it down because your last player possession would be this. But we're also we're not going to bean back. This is not something we bean back. Um, so we're not going to have a real clear indication of where the ball was in last possession. It's just you have to guess if that's what they they're not gonna take that option, but that would just be this is where we just guess. But then this is like I said, this is just communication. Maybe a little bit of patience. Maybe the headline judge or whoever blew the whistle. I'm not sure who blew the whistle. But we gotta know the situation. We see it clearly. Line just is signaling like he should. Someone just jumped the gun and blew the whistle. So let's just make sure we know what's going on before we blow this whistle. We have a pass like this, and we just let it play out. Um, see the player stops. Someone blew the whistle. But just make sure we're looking at the line judge. And also, if it's not your call, don't blow it. There's no need for a referee to blow the whistle here. No need for deeps, definitely to blow the whistle. The only people who would blow this play dead would be the wings. So, let's make sure we're communicating, not fishing in ponds. Uh, we all know, we said backward pass, we all know, line judge gives a signal. So everyone should be looking at the line judge. Well, not everyone, look at your keys. But you know what I mean, we're looking at the line judge to make sure we know forward or backwards. So, Again, let's just communication on this one. Communication, another aspect of preventing inverted whistles. Alright, so this one, this one was not blown dead. I'm just using this as an excuse. This is actually an example of very good patience on the whistle. Um, and a time when a little impatience on the whistle could be costly because it could cost a team, a uh, team looks like they're down, cost them a touchdown. If we blow this too, too quickly, but let's just pretend this whistle was blown. So let's say whistle's blown there, inadvertently, inadvertent whistle. They so this would be whistle blown while the ball is in player possession. So they can go, they can replay this down, or they can take the ball right there. Probably going to take the ball right there, because a uh, pretty good game. But the example of this is, it's good patience on the whistle, because if we had blown this in vertically, then this touchdown is wiped off the board. There's, if we blow blown that whistle prematurely, there's no situation where the touchdown stands. Same thing with, let's go back to this play. This is a legit fumble. There's no situation with the inverted whistle. There's no situation where if the red team recovers this ball, they get to keep it. No situation where defense recovers a fumble during an inverted whistle and keeps it. If the if the whistle was blown during the loose ball. So another indication of why patience is important. Same thing here. There's great patience. An inverted whistle here would have cost the team. A touchdown. If we had good patience, didn't happen. So, good job there. And that's it for the inverted whistle. Um, hope you hope you learned something during this. 
Remember the key is prevent it in the first place. But we also need to know what happens when we blow it. And I would just let me just add to you no know, having a number to whistle does not make a crew bad or artificial bad. It's it's part of the game. It's gonna happen. How the crew and the official respond to an inadvertent whistle is what's important. A lot of times I've seen crew has an inadvertent whistle and they're just done for the rest of the game. Let's treat an inadvertent whistle like any other kind of call where you think you missed it. Just put it in the back of your head. Replay and just not replay. Put it in the back of your head. Play out the rest of the game. And we can come back after the game, look at film, and look at the inverted whistle. But during the game, you cannot dwell on it. Just like any other missed call, you have to move on from it and respond positively. It sucks. We all hate inverted whistles. But the measure of a crew really is how they respond to what happening in the game. So that's all I'll say about that part. Again, it does not make a crew or an official bad. It just happens. But it's something that happens that can be prevented. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you next time.